Hello, N4HNH here. I'm in my truck with the Yesu FT891, and I'm shooting this video to answer Philip's question about the uh, Yesu FC50 tuner that goes with the uh, 891. And you can see here that the uh, tuner and the radio are one. That's because the tuner comes with a special mounting kit. You can see the bracketry on the side here, and even there's some little feet that uh, allow the radio to slide into the tuner, a little slots really. And these, um, there's a little mounts that you put on the radio, so the the two become one. It's kind of nice. And um, I have the radio. Let me see if I can position the camera where you can see this. The radio is sitting on a pedestal, so that's a um, a mount that's got three screws. It goes down through the floor of the of this of the truck of the hump part here. And then it's just a stalk that bolts to the uh, bottom of the radio, and you can angle it any which way. If, as you can see, by the way, mine is mounted. Let me see if I can get this back positioned here. Um, the way it's mounted on mine, the uh, radio is tilted up toward the driver position. Okay, but that's not what the video is about, per se, but... That's how the FC-50 is mounted to it for mobile operation. Now, currently, I've got my 60-meter ham stick up on the top of the truck, and uh, I use a triple magnet and uh, system that I've had for, for years, way over probably 20-plus years. And I have a different ham stick for each band. Now, some of my ham sticks are original Lakeview ham sticks, and some of them are... Uh, the newer MFJ version, and then I've got one 10 meter ham stick per se uh, that is made by Shark, and it's a it's a pretty good antenna. I like it. I'll, I'll say that um, uh, without doing a video about ham sticks, one of the things I like about the MFJ version and the Shark version is you can set the SWR and then uh, take them and uh, take them apart. They break down in half, so it's easy to store them. And they actually seem to perform by as well as the original Lakeview did. The Lakeview, you couldn't break down in half. Uh, once it was tuned, I mean, you could maybe take a Sharpie and mark how far down the, the stinger went into the bottom half. You know, and you'd have to take it apart every time by undoing the screw. So that was not very convenient. So, uh, But even with the ham sticks, being that they are uh, one per band, and I've got the quick disconnects on mine so I can twist... You know, quarter turn, they come disconnected, and I switch switch it out. While they will be resonant on a portion of each band, they're not resonant necessarily across the entire band. Now, admittedly, once you get to 20 meters and on up, you know, 10 through 10, even 6, it gives you a pretty wide coverage. Um, but down on, uh, especially when you get down to 40, 60, uh, 80, I don't do 160 in the mobile, but 40, 60, and 80, uh, you get a very narrow uh, bandwidth that's resonant. So I use the FC50 simply to touch up the band edges. Um, so uh, give you an idea here. Let me grab the microphone. And um, I've got the RF gain up as well, uh, or rolled back. That's why you see the S meter stuck where it is. All right, so... Um, I'll just throw out a quick whistle here and let you look at the SWR without the tuner. So it's about a 1.8, 1.7, 1.8 here on the channel 1. And it's optimized for the center of the band. There's channel 3. So it's a little less than 1.5, about a 1.4. And by the way, part of that is because I've got a, a little bit of a compromise here when using a mag mount. Um, on these lower bands, a mag mount's not the greatest, okay? But it gives me, you know, the ability to mount the antenna in the top center of the truck. Um, so here's the high end, a little over a two. So um, I'll show you how I deal with this tuner. Now what I've done here is I've gone into the menu and the uh, function menu here, and tuner is right up there. So I've just put the arrow on tuner and then long press the A button so that assigned tuner to my A button. All right, so that's the deal on that. So now to turn the tuner on and off, I simply tap my A button. Now if I need to tune, let's say I discover that I, you know, I need to touch it up a little bit. 
Um, let me get off this FT8 frequency. Okay, there's no QSO here. So uh, the, the, the radio and the tuner are communicating with one another. So all you have to do to tune is long press the tuner button. Watch this. Then you let go. And there it is. It's tuned. It'll automatically throw the radio into AM and, and low power and do the tuning operation. Now, the question was, do I leave my tuner on while I'm, um, you know, moving around through the bands? Well, you know, what's, uh, so on 60 meters, I can't, I can't rotate the knob and change the frequency because remember, these are pre-programmed in. But if I change frequencies, you'll see the tuner turns off because I don't have it turned on on channel 2. So if I now if I turn it on, channel five, if I come back to channel five, it'll come back on. Now the question was, you hear all that clicking, that's the little relays that it's engaging for LC networks that it has stored in memory so it knows which relays to engage to go back to that particular LC network to give me a good match. Um, so the question is, if I were to, let's say I changed bands, um, I will do that. So I'm pushing in the multi knob so I can be in, in uh, channel memory mode here. I'll go down to uh, 40 meters. Now I'm going to turn the tuner on, but I don't have the 40 meter uh, antenna on there. But as I turn, as I move the VFO, watch. Oh, I'm in lock. Quick press of the power button. Hear the clicking? So what I've done is, is every 25 kilohertz or so, I've, I've uh, let it run its tune, and it stores that in memory. So as I'm moving through the band, it's selecting those memories. And it could be even that I might have been on an odd frequency working somebody, and I just hit it and touched it up, and it'll remember that too. So it doesn't necessarily you know, have to be every 25 kilohertz. But as I move through, it's going to click because it's engaging the relays necessary to engage the certain LC networks it needs to get a match. It doesn't know because I'm not transmitting. It doesn't know that I don't have the 40 meter stick up there. But so, yeah, I'm the question had to do with, you know, do I leave this thing on while I'm scanning the band? If I know I'm going to go somewhere specific, probably I do leave it on. But if I'm just scanning around looking for somebody, um, or just listening to see if there's anything out there, then I disable it because I don't want to wear those relays out. Relays um, are good. After about 10,000 cycles on a relay, it's on a borrowed time. So I don't, I don't like to overwork a relay if I don't have to. So I generally, I'll just scan the band without the tuner turned on. And so then when I, you know, if I do decide I want to work somebody, then I'll engage it. And when I engage it, it'll it'll look at what frequency I'm on, and it'll remember the last setting that worked for that frequency. And and listen, you heard that click. It just went ahead and it's found the last setting for that frequency. So, like I said, I don't like to do it this way and keep it on while I'm scanning through the band just to save those relays. I'm the same way about my base station. Um, had an FT920 relay went out in it. It was a tuner relay. It was for the six meter side. But when I went to order it, the ASU didn't have it. I only found one place in the entire world that had that relay. And so I got it in. And when I was putting it in, I discovered that the relay that was I was using to as a transmit ground to, to key my AL80B amplifier was the same exact type of relay. And knowing that relays wear out, I thought, mm, man, I'll be, I better find another way to do this. Because I only found one replacement relay worldwide. So... I went and bought the Heil system, their foot switch. I even bought the boom, and I said, well, I guess I'll get a Heil microphone now, and I'll be totally hands-free. But I didn't go get a Heil microphone because of the microphone. I went and got a Heil microphone set up because I wanted to use a foot switch. And, um, and that foot switch directly keys my amplifier, saves the relay and the radio. So I went into the radio menu. and Well, on the FT920, it's a switch on the back. Same thing with my FTDX 5000, though. Um, I'm not using the relay internal to do the uh, triggering. Now, if you've watched my video about the Elecraft 
uh, KPA 1500, I've actually gotten their cable and I'm using solid state inside the radio to transmit the Elecraft amplifier and uh, complete QSK there. Again, another subject, but the FC 50 tuner works. Now, let me say, tell you what it doesn't do. This is not a wide range tuner. It will correct a three to one or less. So it's a touch up tuner, if you will. Like most modern radios now, they have a touch up tuner. I had a spam call come in and interrupted my video. Don't you just hate those things? It just gets to be so annoying. Um, so anyway, to finish up, this is a touch-up tuner. And what I want to tell you about that is my old mobile was a Yaesu FT890, FT890AT, the one with an auto tuner built in. You ought to look that up if you're not familiar with that radio. Worked great mobile. Honestly, Works great, sounds great. The noise blanker is better than what's in the 891. The 891's noise blanker is done in DSP. The 890's noise blanker was analog, and it wouldn't. You, there were no adjustments other than the amount of noise blanker. Where in this, you have to go in, do a menu, set some timing, and it'll still wind up distorting receive audio, especially if the signals are much above an S9. Uh, it'll distort their audio a little bit. 890 was golden in here, and. Uh, it had the um, uh, built-in antenna tuner. Now, the radio itself was, uh, is still about as high as the two of these together, but wider and heavier. But get this. With a 10-meter ham stick, I could operate 10, 12, 15, 17, and 20 meters just using the internal tuner on the radio. And by the way, it worked great. I got great reports worldwide with that setup. So I had a 10-meter ham stick. Then I had a 40 meter ham stick and an 80 meter ham stick. And between those, I could work every band I wanted to mobile. Uh, when I went to this radio and this tuner, this tuner can only correct a three to one. It's not wide range enough to use one 10 meter ham stick to work 10 through 20 meters. And in fact, I have to use a different ham stick for every band, but it can touch it up on the ends uh, when needed. So there you go. That's the uh, the Yaesu FC50 tuner in my truck with my 891. I do like the 891. There are other conveniences about it. I will tell you this. The audio quality on it as far you know, it's a small radio. I do have an external speaker, but even with all that, the 890 beats it as far as the audio quality on receive. It just sounds like you took a blanket off the speaker, as my friend Joel says. So there you go. That's the, uh, the FC50 uh, tuner with the 891. And yeah, I will normally not turn the tuner on while I'm just scanning the band because I don't want all the relays in there clattering and, um, you know, for unnecessarily, really. Oh, I should mention one other thing. Um, the instructions talk about how you can open up the uh, tuner and, and change some dip switch or uh, jumpers, I believe it is, and make it to where the tuner operates while you're receiving as well. I did not do that. Now, if you're going to use this inside the house, you may want to do that. But... Um, for a vehicle where I don't really, I mean, you you know, you don't need a lot of sensitivity on receive when you're in a vehicle because you're working, you know, down here on bands where you're going to get a lot of noise, power lines, red lights, all kind of stuff, uh, burglar alarms, your in engine. So I didn't need the extra sensitivity, and therefore I did not um, engage the option to have this tuner uh, route the receive signal through it. So just so you know, I just left it as it was factory default. All right. Hope you found the video helpful, helpful and informative. Uh, thank you to my Patreons. And, Philip, thank you for the uh, great question. Uh, 73 from N4 H&H. &H.